Welcome to the Transform Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Cass Henry. I'm on a mission to help women live their best and happiest life. In order to do that, I believe we need to live with a lot less clutter in our homes and in our minds. So if this is you and you're looking to learn the best tips for transforming all areas of your life, then you have come to the right place. Thanks so much for being here. Now, let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Transform Your Life podcast. I'm so excited because today is a brand new day. I get to interview my very first person on the podcast because honestly, life is so much better when we share it with others. So why not just start? We're, we're going to dive right in. I am here with my friend, Jill. She has the brand Grow Like a Mother. And so my friends, welcome to the podcast. And Jill, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and how you got started. Oh, thanks. I'm so excited to be your first guest. This is such a thrill. Um, yeah, my name is Jill. I am a time management strategist and I kind of arrived at this work in a roundabout way. I had um, taken up entrepreneurship in early 2019. I had opened up, as you know, a thrift store in Rockland, my little town. And it was in an effort after my second child was born to sort of break from the nine to five and take more control back because everything was was chaotic. And I had these two little kids and I didn't want to commute downtown. So I thought I'll do this thrift store and um, try out, you know, my business degree, put it into practice. And then the pandemic hit. And then my oldest was diagnosed with autism. And then my postpartums flared up, like everything kind of came crashing down. And the business itself didn't survive, but what did survive from that experience was the community um, that I created. And it was always more about that for me than the clothes. Like, I just wanted to have this place where people could come, bring their coffee, have a chit chat, you know, like just a, a circle of women who are normal people trying to just get through life, you know? And so when I was in that hard season of trying to figure out how to deal with all of the challenges externally, I did a lot of soul searching and personal development work. Um, and that's kind of how my podcast grow like a mother started. I was taking tools I was learning and tweaking them to fit with my life as a working mom and sharing them. And then from there, the more that I learned and the more people that I spoke with and worked with, because I had started coaching as sort of an offshoot of that, but it wasn't, it wasn't specific coaching on anything. It was just like, I want to help. Let's, let's talk. And here's how I made my life better. You know, I didn't, I didn't go through coaching school or anything like that. I just sort of grassroots myself. But what I learned through the experience of talking to women and moms specifically is that we struggle to create the life we want because we're not really personalizing how we're coming about it. There's all the tools that are out there, but they don't all work for each one of us. So um, my passion now and the, and the work I do now is really focused around helping moms see what tools are actually going to work for them with their personality, with their career, with the season of life they're in, with all of the external circumstances um, and using tools like time management and self-care to create these rhythms and practices that'll support them in, in really crafting the life that they want. I love that. I love all of that. And it's so true how we, we think that we are meant to fit in this mold, but in fact, we're not like screw the mold what works for one person is not going to help the other person. In fact, sometimes and, and very often it's the complete opposite. So I love that you take a single person, a unique human being like we all are, and you say, hey, you're unique. Let's create a unique style for you because that's the only way that you're going to succeed. If, if you feel like you're handcuffed to this mold of what someone tells you you're supposed to be, do, have, or where you're supposed to go or, or all the things, that's not going to make you feel free and fulfilled. And so the work that you're doing, oh my gosh, I love it. And especially for moms, because moms, 
that's the last thing they think about is how can I take care of me in the ways that I want to take care of me? And a lot of times I'm sure they don't even know where to start. Yeah. Amazing. Totally. So can you tell us a bit about what moms come to you the most for, mm -hmm. like the, the most help for, and, and, and what's an example of a way that you've helped some moms in the past? Yeah, for sure. So I find right now, a lot of the moms that are coming to me are into the work, like quote, the work, right. Of personal growth. And they're stuck because what's happening is they've read the books and they're listening to the podcast and they're working so hard on themselves, but they're not seeing the results that they're, that they're after, right. They're, they're like, well, what is the missing piece? Because I'm super frustrated. I'm doing all the things and it's not working. Like it worked to a certain point and I saw some progress and now I'm stuck. In the missing piece is the personalization, of course, right? But I find that a lot of the, the problems that people are having right now are surrounding burnout and guilt. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the barriers, actually. One of the barriers to people reaching out for help is the guilt. Like, I don't have the time to do this for myself. I don't have, you know, the money I could be spending on the the year of scouts and beavers and girl guides and sparks instead of spending two hours to really anchor in and figure out how I can show up in a way that's going to make all this feel less chaotic. Right. But things that are, things that are helpful. I mean, I can give you examples out the wazoo, but it really depends on the person. But I had a client in Austria who has uh, horses that she is um, tending and caring for to help out a friend, but she has not been visiting them and, and taking the time for several reasons, because she has a young daughter, because this farm where the horses are, or is, you know, a two hour drive away. And because she's building up her own business. And these are all really legitimate external um, blocks or challenges, but we were able to do some work with her calendar and figure out, and also her mindset. That's really, I mean, all of the work starts with mindset, right? Yeah. But we were able to shift it so that we came up with three different creative ideas on how she could include this um, commitment. And it, it filled her up to be with these animals. Like it wasn't just something she had said she was going to help with. Um, which was creating guilt when she didn't do it, but also it filled her cup up. So it was self-care. And so we figured out three different ways that we could come at this so that she could actually take the time to do it. Um, and now she's going regularly, you know, and it's like several times a month she'll get out and sometimes she brings her daughter with her and the daughter can be um, occupied and play with the other kids that are there living on the farm. And sometimes, you know, the husband gets some time with the daughter, just them like dad and daughter day, you know, and my client's able to go for herself. And it's just really, it's really cool to see when you put some thought into creatively, okay, let's view this as a, as an opportunity, not a challenge. How can we get this thing in our life that we say we want, that's important to us, even though we have, yes, we all have challenges. We all have schedules. We all have obligations and jobs and families that we're dealing with, like, but it's possible. We just need to come at it in a, in a creative way. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few things that I, that I'm, that I'm kind of seeing in my mind from that and I'll allow my mind to drop things <laughs> as needed. Um, but I, I find that a lot of people feel like they shouldn't need to ask for help. And so there's also that compounding effect. Like I shouldn't need to be asking for someone to help with my schedule. I should be competent enough to do that. But it's not about competency at all. It's helping other people see the things that we cannot see ourselves because we're in it. And in fact, it's, it's an empowering thing to be able to say, hey, I need help. And I'm going to take the effort or, or, or I'm going to put myself in a vulnerable position to say, I can't do this all on my own. And so I love that people can come to you for that. Um, I feel like burnout and shame, they kind of go hand in hand. We're trying to, we're trying to do it all. And then we feel shame that we can't do it all. And then we burn out and then we feel more shame that we burned. It's like, it's crazy. And I feel like when it comes to personal development, we're running in all directions but we don't know actually where we're running to. So of course we don't feel like it's working because we don't know what the outcome is. We don't know really what we want or, or yeah, we don't like, we, we don't know what we want. We don't know how we want to feel. So how are we supposed to know that we got there? And so I think a big thing is actually like 
stopping. And, and like you say, just fit, like, where are you? Like, and, and, and with this horse example, is this something that you even want to do? Why do you want to do it? Why is it important to you? Or is it an obligation? Okay. If it's an obligation, why do you feel the need to have to say, yes, can we create some batteries around here? But, oh, it is something that you actually want to do. So how can we, how can we make it work? And so it's such a beautiful opportunity to stop and sit back. And then in order to go, go forward, you need to be pulled back. My, my sister and I, we have a, a matching tattoo of an arrow. And when I was going through depression, um, her and I got that together because she's like, sis, um, in order to go forward, you have to be pulled back. And she's like, this is your pullback moment. And I'll, I'll always remember that. And sometimes I forget it's there. But in these moments, I'm like, those hard, hard moments of confusion and being in the chaos and the turbulence of life, those moments are there to pull you back so you can go forward. So I, I'm so glad that you are doing this work because Jill, you just said it yourself, that, that moment you shared with your client, it caused a ripple effect, not just for the people in her life, but for the animals as well. Like how cool is that? So I'm just, I'm fired up. I don't know. I'm just so excited. I'm so happy about the work that you're doing. And who knew, like, you couldn't have planned this, like, who knew that, you know, being a mom, and then because you became a mom, you wanted to start a thrift store, and then, and then because that didn't work out, you're like, but I have this community, and I'm going to help this, like, you couldn't have chosen that path, and I'm so glad that that happened for you, and like you say, it's not happening, like, against us, it, it's happening for us, it's not a challenge, it's an opportunity, so it's all about creating the mindset to see that, ah, I love that. And and I love that you have so many examples of it as well. It's just, there's just proof in the pudding, you know? So yeah. um, for everyone listening, Jill will be a guest expert in my upcoming program, Worthy and Free, so that she can help you really analyze your schedule and, and figure out how to fit the things into your life that you actually want and not necessarily the to-do that you feel obligated to do and all the rest. So we'll get into that another time, but I want to carry on um, with this. So um, Jill, I, and I'm looking up at my screen here, and I and I was hoping that the alignment was going to be the same, but whatever. <laughs> um, what are the top five things um, you, for, what are the top five ways, or let's just say three, what are the top three ways that moms can manage their time better? Ah, uh, Okay. Really good question. I actually just finished writing an article that's going to be in a magazine in, in August, like the top five. Congratulations. Time yeah, thanks. Doing a lot more of that, which is really fun because I like, I love writing. And so to be able to, to create these helps me like put all the thoughts in one place, which is super handy. Um, but so it's top of mind. Um, so the first thing that I always say is helpful regardless of your sort of personality type, um, without diving too deep into the nitty gritties is eat your frog. And I'm sure that you're familiar with this term, right? But for anyone who's not, you consider your frog, there's the book, of course it is. <laughs> you consider your frog to be the most important thing on your to-do list and also the thing that you least want to do, right? So the story kind of goes, if the first thing you do each morning is to eat a live frog, nothing worse can happen for the rest of the day. And so in productivity and in time management, we use that, that fable to make the frog the thing on your list that is going to move the needle for you, but you've been procrastinating on. So if you do this thing first, you gain some momentum, some positive energy from having accomplished it. Also, it never takes as long as you think it's going to take. It's never as scary as you think it's going to be. But if you can focus on just doing that one thing first, even if it does take up all of your energy and you literally have nothing left to give, you've made the biggest impact you can in that day. More likely what's going to happen is that you get some energy and momentum from it and you can soar through the rest of your tasks with some, um, you know, rejuvenation and some creativity and the other things feel easier in comparison. So eat your frog is always, always good, no matter who you are, no matter what time management strategy or archetype I would assign you it's so true and and I don't want to cut you off but is is um when when you think so much about a task that you don't want you don't want to do it can consume days and weeks and cause you to procrastinate and then as you are in this mind of procrastination you end up overeating and overspending and then you realize like holy crap that task only took me one hour or 30 minutes but I spent weeks avoiding it 
And so that's such a valuable tip to eat the frog. The, the frog every day for me is my cold shower <laughs> <I love it. laughs> because I hate it. But thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Number two. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, the cold shower. Yeah. It's my nemesis too. Um, okay. So the second thing that I love to share with people is this idea of time confetti. So we do actually have a lot of free time in our days compared to previous generations, right? We have ATMs and we can deposit checks with our phone. We don't have to go to the bank, you know, like we have washing machines. We don't have, we have so many modern conveniences that give us extra time, but the way that our lives are structured, that time doesn't come in big chunks. That time comes in what's uh, termed time confetti. It's little pockets throughout the day. And so I always tell people to get intentional about paying attention to when these little pockets exist. Like for me, it's if I'm early picking up my kids at school. Oh, I don't actually have to go in for the next five or 10 minutes. I can sit in my car and, you know, open up my Duolingo app and practice if I'm learning a language, which I am right now. Or I always have a book with me. I could open up that book and read 10 pages of a book before I go in. And, or I could call my mom or catch up with my best friend or intentionally take those 10 minutes to scroll so that I'm not, it's not in the back of my mind when I've got my kids like, oh, I wonder if I got any emails or, you know, it doesn't matter what you do with that time. But the idea is getting really good at recognizing the time when it comes up. I have like a, a list I keep in my phone, right? So it's like time confetti things. So it'll be like deep breathing exercises or read a book or um, you know, it might just be go for a walk, like go and get some sunshine in your eyes. It can be something that's going to be, um, a self-care, a quick self-care thing, or it could be toward a goal you're working on. It's really up to you, but time confetti is such an underutilized tool because what do we do when we've got five minutes, we pick up our phone, but yeah, we're not doing it. And we're not doing it intentionally. We're just like, okay, well, I have to waste five minutes. Right. Yeah. It's like, I love this concept, time confetti. I hope everyone can see the visual of confetti around them, all the colors. It like when I started the 75 hard challenge, I needed to maximize my time confetti. <laughs> um, all pockets of time. So let's say my 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 day was completely jam-packed of appointments and clients and all of the things, and I only had one time frame of un uninterrupted 45 minutes because you have to do two 45 minute workouts one specifically outside to get that outside 45 minute workout in was very challenging but I was like oh but I can do that let's say if I had to bring my son to therapy that night oh I can do that while he's in his therapy and I can just do loops around the building it might be boring but I'm getting it done but what a lot of people do is by default they're like oh I have 30 minutes to spend. I can just sit on my phone. Oh, I have 15 minutes here. No, you could use that 15 minutes while you're cooking to prepare, to, to do meal prepping, to cut up all the fruits and veggies. That's what I do. Most, most nights I lose my phone because I'm maximizing my confetti of time. So I love that concept. That is so valuable. Mm -hmm. I love it too. It's, it's my favorite by far. And I'm uh, I'm doing a bunch of research about it. I'm going to do a podcast episode about, episode about time confetti, but it's, yeah, it's so, such a fun, such a fun idea. And then also I think like confetti party, like let's celebrate. You know, we were talking about celebrating ourselves um, when I had you on my podcast just before this. And it's like, we need to celebrate those moments of, oh, I did it. Oh, I figured the time. Oh, and rec not only recognize, but celebrate it, you know, yes. like- and I think that by doing that, you're also teaching your kids to do the same. Mm -hmm. Like the way that we move and flow and, and speak about ourselves and about the world around us, our kids are being sponges too. And I think that we are not aware of that enough. And so I'm recognizing now, like my son, he's setting timers for himself. So in the morning, he'll watch his, his iPad while eating his show, but he knows that in order to get everything else done in his morning without feeling rushed, I'm so proud. Like, <laughs> He will set a timer to be done watching a show and eating by 7.30 because then he'll make his lunch and you'll set a timer to do that. And this morning it was 7.55 and he's like, mom, can you drive me to school now? I'm like, dude, we're not leaving for another 20 minutes. He's like, wow, I have 20 minutes. I'm really ahead of schedule. And I'm like, yeah, you are. And I give him like a fist pump and I'm like, dude, great job. Like great job really managing your time. And now how would you like to spend your extra time? You earned it. 
Do you want to get ahead of your tasks? So do you want to empty the dishwasher now or save it for after school? Do you want to play on your iPad a little bit more? Do you want to go outside play for basketball? It's like when you maximize your time, you realize actually how much time you have. Totally. Oh, I love that story. And it's so true that we, by example, but by doing the things that help us, we're helping our kids because we're showing them and they grow up in this world where they just, they soak it in and it's just part of them. They don't have to learn it later in life like we do. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Oh, and so Jill, good. do you want to share with me one more from that list? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The The third thing that I think works super well for almost everybody is weekly planning as opposed to like a daily to-do list. And I've got a whole podcast episode about it. I teach weekly planning all the time, but there's a specific way to do it to make yourself more successful and to give yourself flexibility within the week because a lot of people feel um, confined when they try to schedule tasks, um, but it actually gives you a lot more freedom when they're in there. So um, a weekly planning framework and specifically only putting three results that you want to achieve on your your plan for the week um, is a really good way to make sure that you're getting a lot done, but also working in time for self-care and rest and flexibility. Yeah, I love that. I find that if you were to plan it out per week and I, I do per week, but then I also every morning look at it per day so that I can, there is that flexibility so that you're not confined. Exactly. So that you're feeling empowered versus trapped. No one wants to feel trapped. And so we're always seeking, we're always seeking a way to feel free. And this gives you that so that you're not stacking up your week and setting yourself up for failure and overwhelm and rushing. And then everything else is an added bonus. It's like, okay, I, I accomplished my three things that I wanted and look at all of this bonus stuff that I added in as well. So, wow, that's amazing. I, I can't wait to see just how many people you can like help them transform their time because their time is their life and um, to break free from the confines of what they feel like they have to live their life by. Like even just wake up an hour earlier. I never thought that I would wake up at like 4.30. I was like, I will never be that person that wakes up at that time. But then when my timer goes off, I'm like, heck yeah, it's another day. Let's get it. I get a whole day in before 7 a.m. And so I'm sure you talk to people about that too. It's like, do you know how much life you can live before 7 a.m.? It's It's my favorite time. Yes. It's a lot. There's... The, the, the people that are outside walking at that time, they are different humans. I tell mm-hmm. you, their smile does not fade after you walk past them. It stays and you make eye contact and they're actually looking up versus looking down. It's like, wow, what a difference. Yeah, so true. Absolutely right. I love that. Okay. So um, I don't know what time it is right now, but that doesn't matter. Um. Let me see here. So you said moms oftentimes struggle that you've seen the most with burnout and shame. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Can you, um, can you tell us a little bit about your mom's, your busy mom's toolbox Mm -hmm. um, and, and what that would look like for people to have access to that? Yeah, thanks. This is so fun. And it's something that has just gotten juicier and juicier as like time has gone on because I originally created it it's a five part video series basically. And, um, they're 20 minute modules. So very easy to digest. I know as a mom, I appreciate it when I've got the opportunity to do something when it works for my schedule and it can't be too long. Um, it can't take up too much time because if I have to come back to it two or three times, I'm going to ditch it. Like I need to be able to do it in one commute to drop off school back, you know? So I created these videos and, um, the videos are, focus on mindset, goal setting, and time management. Um, There's, in addition to these videos, a whole bunch of um, mastermind classes and guest expert audios and videos that I created. And I, um, I created them for a different group program, but I wanted to include them in the Busy Moms Toolbox because they're just so good that it feels like when someone signs up and and gets access to the busy mom's toolbox, I want them to feel like they're the luckiest bitch ever. Like they are like, okay, I spent 33 bucks and I'm getting a guided um, evening restorative yoga session. Okay. That was created specifically for moms. I'm getting um, a parenting expert who's like multi 
New York Times bestselling author, parenting expert, giving me advice on boundaries. Cool. I've got someone who is trained by Bob Proctor himself teaching me about manifestation. In addition to five really easy, easy to digest like videos that I can do at my own pace that start to give me the basics. It's really tactical. There's not a lot of fluff. I put a lot into 20 minutes. So it's like tip, 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 tip. Um, there's also recommendations that I keep um, sort of real time of books, podcasts. I break them down into like, here's some business books. Here's a podcast. If you need to like have a kick in the pants, here's a very loving one. Here's, you know, so it's this place you can go. And I've just literally, it's so easy. It's in a Google doc, not a doc, but like a Google folder. And I've popped everything in there. Here's your link. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the link. You go in, it's all there. And I just keep adding to it. And it feels so supportive to be able to have so many tools in one place at such an accessible price point for people. I'm in love with this product. Yeah, that sounds amazing, especially because it's targeted for moms. Um, like I'm a mom. So I'm like, whenever, whenever I feel like moms are searching for resources on the internet, there's such an abundance of resources out there that they could spend so much time just trying to find which one would work for them. But when you have a portal, a toolbox that they can go to at any time that's specific for them, that saves them time, that saves them energy. And for it, do they get lifetime access to that? Like it's a of one course. and done. Yeah. Amazing. So, and then the fact that you're constantly adding things to it, what, what a bang for your buck. I tell you, yeah. like all moms need this busy mom's toolbox. And it's, it's so much more than just like busy mom's toolbox. It's like, this is like the empowerment. This is like, oh my gosh, there's just so much to it. So, um, for all the busy moms out there, definitely, uh, I'll put in the show notes, the busy moms toolbox link so that you can get access to it. Like 33 bucks. Come on. That's you're spending way more than that. Like buying your kids McDonald's. So right. pretty sure you could afford that. Absolutely. It's so expensive, but I, I, I'm proud. I haven't had any fast food since January 1st. Um, no pop, no sugar, no can't like I've had some sugar, but anyways, um, needless to say, definitely dive into the busy mom's toolbox. Okay. And Jill, and last thing, please tell us about your book, happy, wealthy, and wise and where people can find it. Oh, thanks. This Congratulations. Cool... Thank you. It was, it was a lifelong dream when I was a kid, you know, how we, we would always dream about whatever being whatever we wanted to be when we grew up for me, it was always, I wanted to be an author, but I never wrote anything. You know what I mean? Like I loved writing and I had journals and but I, and I wrote little poems, but I never actually wrote anything. So I was never any closer to being my, my childhood dream of being an author. And so I let it slide for a long time. And in, I guess in my twenties, I started keeping this word doc on my computer of different strategies that I was learning through therapy and reading um, books and things like that. There's no podcast at that time um, or YouTube or anything like that, but tools that I was, I was accumulating that would help me in my moments of stress, of my moments of overwhelm, of my moments of anxiety. Because as you know, when you're in that fight or flight um, um, nervous system, you, the part of your brain that can access information actually turns off. You do not have access to information when you're in crisis, um, whether it be big crisis or small crisis, right? Um, so when I was having anxiety, I'd forget all my tools. So I would just go to my computer and I'd be like, okay, this one, let's try this thing. And I built this list and like over 20 years and 15 to 20 years, I would say. And so it got really big um, in my my personal uh, world, I just kind of coined it my happiness book, um, but I didn't do anything with it until well into motherhood. I would say my kids were two and four, maybe three and five. And other moms would say like, how do you do all of what you're doing? Like you're a business owner, you're a wife, you've got kids, one has special needs. You've, you've got this going on, that going on, you full-time work. And I'm like, yeah, um, well, I'm dying half the time. I need like I need tools, but I've got the tools and realize that not everyone had the tools. So I thought, oh, I need to, um, I need to put this in a format where everyone can access it. And so out of those, you know, hundreds of, of tips, I merged them into themes of happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And the book is really structured like a page a day calendar is 
where you, you literally just open it to one page. It gives you a story, a quote, a piece of wisdom to ponder for the day. Um, and then also either a journal prompt or an affirmation or a quote from somebody um, to support the theme of that page. Um, and so when I was thinking about how to design it, I really wanted to make it again, accessible for moms. I'm picturing the mom who's busy. Obviously she's overwhelmed or else she wouldn't need a tool like this, but she doesn't have time to sit and read like cover to cover a self-help book necessarily, yeah. you know? Um, so that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of how it, it came to be. I really sit in November and it's on, I mean, it's in lots of local bookstores here in Ottawa, some Indigos, some local bookstores, a uh, couple of like metaphysical shops, because it, I also think of it as like an Oracle tool, like flip it open. What do you need to know today? Right. Um, and then of course it's on Amazon and Target and Barnes and Noble and all of the, anywhere you can find books. It's, it's all over the place. Wow. That is huge. And the fact that you, that you made your childhood dream come true is phenomenal because I feel like so often those are just dreams that we never fulfill because of all the reasons that I'm sure you and I could chat about <laughs> for days on end. But I also love the fact that you can just open it up and read whatever page you feel, you know, called to read that day or just one page at a day um, at a time. I, I think that's such a beautiful, ah, what a gift to the world that you've given so Jill, this has been such a great, a great conversation. How can people find you? Uh, well, I'm on Instagram mostly. It's bro like a mother is my handle there. That's also the name of the podcast. So you can go listen there at because check out Cass's episode. We had a really good chat with her on my podcast. And my website is where everything lives. So it's jillwright.ca. Okay, amazing. Well, Jill, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. I can't wait to see you in the my program and we will chat about that later on um go out and check out jill grow like a mother and order her book it sounds like phenomenal and i definitely ha have to add it to my bookshelf here behind me so i'm definitely gonna be grabbing a copy and um, i'm just sending you so much love and gratitude jill and i can't wait to continue to chat off off the podcast and thank, thank you. you so much, you guys, for listening to another episode of the Transform Your Life podcast, whether you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'm sending you so much love. Um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Okay. Bye, my friend.